Highway exits, how are they numbered? So there's two different methods. The first is sequential numbering, meaning the first exit is one, the second exit is two, and so on. Being a Connecticut native, I grew up thinking this is how it was done everywhere, until I saw this map like a week ago and realized we're just an outlier. So how everyone else does it, which is the better way, is mileage based. Mile zero on highways always starts at either the southernmost or westernmost end of the highway and resets at state borders. The last exit on I-70 in Colorado is exit 438, and sure enough, it's at mile marker 438. For exits between mile markers, standard rounding applies. This system is much more intuitive than sequential numbering because it's easier to judge distances between exits. If you're at exit 20 and need to get off at exit 30, you know you have to go 10 more miles. So this works well if the exits are at least a mile apart each, but what if you've got two exits within the same mile, like at a cloverleaf interchange? That's when you break out the alphabet and start tacking on A, B, C, and so on until your next exit is in a different mile. You may have also seen cardinal directions being used instead of alphabetical letters. That's not standard. Speaking of standards, the MUTCD requires mileage-based exit numbers on interstate highways. Failure to comply with the MUTCD can result in states losing their federal funding for those highways. To give states that use non-standard numbering time to change over to mileage-based, they can wait until the exit signs need to be replaced anyways. For instance, Connecticut plans to complete this change over the next decade. And finally, I talked about left exits in a previous video. You may notice that the number plaques for left exits are aligned to the left side of the sign. And standard right exits will have their number plaques aligned to the right.